So um, this will be somewhat shorter than George's. Um, I just want to make sure that you can see the screen at the moment. Yes, we can see your screen. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's just really a general talk on AD tools and collaboration. Um, so let's just step into it. Firstly, um, you know. A lot of you will not know who I am. I'm actually quite new to Amiga OS 4, to be honest. I'm known as RJD324. Uh, the forum of choice for me, at least, is Amigans.net. Um, I'm a software engineer, um, and I've been a, a Amiga enthusiast for a long time, mainly in classic. And I've always enjoyed creating programs and making sure that they're compatible with 1.3. Um, for some reason, I love the nice blue backgrounds and all that stuff. For Workbench 1.3, you know, all that look, and uh, it's my favourite. So, by um, oh yeah, and also uh, I had a so during the pandemic, um, everyone was stuck in the house. So you know, I kind of wanted to come up with some projects. So I decided okay. Um, you know, in, in Europe, the, 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 the wedge Amigas or the desktop wedge Amigas are much more common. In the USA, you guys all have your big box Amigas. So, um, I've always liked tablet machines, so what I did, in, at least during the pandemic, is I said, okay, I'll put my 500, 600, 1200 in towers, so that's just one hobby that got me through the pandemic. Um, and then, a stroke of fortune happened where I actually saw an X1000 online, uh, on eBay at least. And um, so I, I drove 300 miles there to get them 300 miles back. Um, and actually, I really, really liked it. And I, uh, to be honest, I haven't really stopped using Amiga LS4 since. Uh, I still use my Amiga, my classic Amigas, but generally, it's uh, I'm generally using Amiga LS4. Um, and then an X5000 came up for sale on Amiga, day, and I thought, you know, just in case the X1000 dies, I better get another, I better get another Amiga one machine, just in case, you know, as a backup. And uh, the X5000 ended up being the main machine. And now I've got two Amiga one machines, and uh, I love them both. Um, one of the first things I wanted to do was play my PlayStation games on the Amiga one machines. So that's one, one of the first ports I did was Medknife, and actually. Um, which is a sort of multi-system emulator. Um, and I also like doing all my editing through it using Emacs. That's what I use at work all the time. And notice that we didn't have an Emacs for Amiga OS 4. Um, we did for the classic version, but it doesn't work on the OS 4 version. So uh, I also thought of Jess, uh, Jasper Emacs and uh, Ami Signex. Um, and, all, and along the way, I've done a few game ports, including the Super Mario 64 port that came out a few months ago. So, porting is, uh, yeah, I quite enjoy porting. Um, but as a, as a new Amiga user, as a new Amiga OS 4 user, uh, yeah, uh, I see lots of problems with, uh, with the lack of an up to date web browser. And uh, George uh, last year, <coughs> probably. More than a year ago, said uh, okay, there's a new initiative, the WebKit initiative, and so I decided to join for that to try and see you know, okay, how can I help. Um, and that's what we've been working on. I'll go into more details about why the WebKit isn't there yet at the minute. Um, obviously, it's, you know, it's been going for a little while now, but not 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 that long. Um, and just for a bit of extra information, you know, uh, I'm a recent beta tester for AEON, so I sort of signed the contract there from, from Matthew and uh, very recently joined the Exec SG team. And I do like to work on tools. What I mean by that is things like uh, our compilers, things like our uh, POSIX uh, uh, binary utilities, things like said, things like that, which which is a bit odd, but for some reason I you know I call it sharpening tools, making sure that developers have tools that they can work with out of the box. Uh, so that's what I enjoyed it. For some for whatever reason that's what I quite enjoyed doing. So that's just a bit of uh, like a brief about who I am really. So the minute the 
the, the WebKit team um, the WebKit team actually has changed its name recently to Omega Labs. Um, so whenever I say WebKit team, I'm kind of talking about Omega Labs. Uh, at the minute, it's got George, of course, it's got uh, Paul, and I forget Paul's second name. Maybe George can help me out. Uh, it's got... Um, it's got a AFX, uh, known as AFX Group, and Andrea. Roman, of course, uh, Castle, well, I would say Cas one a and it's got Max, who's been working on the news hills as well, and uh, it's also got Joseph. Uh, who, these are all guys on the medium and stuff. I can't uh, remember their second names, but um, yeah, we're, we're all working together. And what we realised anyway when we were doing WebKit is we were missing some. It was a little bit difficult because we, we, we were missing some compatibilities with things, so we needed. You know, we, we need certain things in, in GCC, for example. Um, I mean, thread level storage is one, but you know, the kernel, the kernel would actually, kernel changes would actually help to help with that as well. Uh, actually, I'm part of the XXT team, so maybe I could have a look at that at some point. But things like that would help making the browser a lot better. And, that, and that, we, we ran into other issues that we needed as well, such as the um, there was some C plus plus tests, like the the core ones test and stuff like that that would fail. And essentially, this is why it's kind of morphed into Amiga Labs. That's not to say at all that the WebKit is not a uh, very strong ambition. It really is, because the ability. I mean, if we want to want to really be serious about the Amiga OS four and get it out there, um, people want to be able to do their documents and stuff like that, such as Google Docs. I mean, if we if we can try and get that sort of stuff working with Amiga with a native Amiga OS uh, browser. That would be that would be a big one, uh, but we changed it to Omega Labs because we realised that we needed to spend a bit of time just bringing our tools a bit more up to date, um, and the collaboration has been absolutely great so far in the last year. I've learned a lot, and then, you know we've all been bouncing ideas off each other and stuff like that. It happens that uh, in Omega Labs we have a meeting at the end of uh, on sort of the last Sunday of every month. So we take minutes of the meeting. We discuss the progress of where we've been, uh, you know, where we are, and, um, and stuff like that, which is really useful. And the, the whole idea of the collaboration as well, I think this is very important, especially in the media world, uh, it seems as though at least that we don't want silos, you know. We don't want people to try to, to, to sort of have all the knowledge in their head and not distribute it. Um, so that's the whole idea of the Amiga Labs to try and document everything as we go along. And um, tests are also are very important as well. It's actually, I have a repository called AD Tools Testing. The whole purpose of that is to try and get a whole bunch of tests together. So things like uh, threading and stuff like that. And, and, and AD Tools Testing, the, the Git repository, you know, I can give links or whatever later on is. The idea is that you, you sort of add your tests in there and, if, and you, you know, sort of with one command it will be able to generate all different variations of your tests. So for example, let's say you create one simple test, um, the AD the Tools Testing script will, it'll compile it against CLIP2, it'll compile it against NewLib, um, it will it will link it. Uh, it will also link it with dynamically with the libraries. It'll link it statically with the libraries, and all of a sudden now you've got four variants of the same test that you can test, and uh, it'll it'll package all that up and make and just run it and, and make it so that what you can do is copy that single compressed file that has all your different tests and all the different variants onto your Amiga One machine, and then you can just run it on your Amiga One machine and um, find out whether or not your tests are working or not. So, you know, testing is very important. Um, so, just to talk now a little bit about AD Tools, the latest version of AD Tools is GCC 11. Um, and to mention that uh, this is quite important as well for the A1222. We know that SP support uh, at the minute is limited to version 6. And uh, so, it's, it's quite important that actually we keep this version 6 up to date, or at least we work on uh, forwarding. Um, or, or probably bring, bringing the SPE code into later versions. It's actually deprecated in version 8, but it doesn't build out of the box. I still have a feeling that you can actually add a command line option during the compiler, the building of uh, GCC in order to bring it in. 
But uh, at the minute, it really is sort of version six, actually. Um, and version eight is, is another important one because it's the one that we use to build the phone. I think the Docker image for the XFSG uses version eight. Uh, but the big, the, the, one of the big issues at the minute is that Bin, Bin Utils is 10 years old in the GCC 11, I think uh, 2013. So that's one of the big, uh, one of the big things that we really got to uh, try and improve there. And I'll, I'll talk about Bin Utils a little bit later on. Uh, but I do mention here that you know the, the, the idea is not to have yet another fork of uh, AD tools. And I'm talking about Sebastian's repository here, the uh, SBA one, um, Sebastian Bau. I think he's second mentioned as well. So we, you know, the last thing you want is to have more and more forks. So any changes that we are doing to AD tools and GCC, uh, the desire is to merge them back into, into the main line and actually I've managed to do that quite a lot. And to be quite honest, Sebastian's quite strict actually, which is good because uh, you never do, you can't just hack things in and just expect them to, uh, to pull them in, which is, which is good. So everything's going back into the main line. And again, I'll talk about um, one of the things that has been recently pulled into the main line, uh, AD Tools GCC branch, uh, when we get down to the ceiling fourth, uh, maybe one of the subsequent slides. And I kind of have a bad, uh, it, not just me, definitely not, but it, obviously it seems as though a lot of people are busy with life and stuff like that, so we haven't got, we've got a lot of talented people, but they just haven't got the time to do things. And, um, I mean, actually, you know, I have a life too, but for some reason I seem to find, find a lot of time to work on, uh, on GCC and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, one of the things for the, for the longest time, we've, a lot of people have been tripping to this issue of needing to have a thread and egg of, because we don't, yeah, um, because we're not in a, for the C plus plus threading at least we're not actually using natively the uh, the underlying C threads uh, P threads library. Instead, there's actually a native solution. So basically, the threading is 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 done directly using the uh, the Amiga OS four kernel. I mean, Amiga OS four kernel, and that was kind of a hack, and it's been in there for a long time. But what we'd really like to see is to be able to use A thread equals P threads, or you can get away with that option altogether and just have A threads, and just have threads working. So that's that's on the on the back burner of things to do. So, so the AD tools recently has been improvements to the reading documentation as well, and in terms of um, the dependencies that you need to actually build them. Uh, one of the one of the most common ones actually is that people generally use LHASA, L -L -L -H, yeah, LHASA, and it never it never actually decompresses the uh, the SDK uh, LHA file properly. So, but anyway, that all you know, those, those dependencies now are in the uh, in the read the, the readme for AD tools. So yeah, bring Bing tools up to date. You know, it's ten years old at the moment. It's two dot two two dot two three dot two, and um, one of the some modules that is used in AD tools is the guild patching system. So I've actually recently made a change to that. So that because at the minute what's going on with big utils is we kind of have a branch. We kind of have a branch not off an official release. We kind of have a particular commit ID. And the guild patching system wouldn't allow you to do that. So you, you wouldn't be able to check out a specific commit ID. You could only do it based on tags or branches. So there's been a code to allow that. Not that that's really important because actually uh, at the minute what's going on is, is, is uh, Max is making some changes so that any changes, um, so that you'll be coming off version 2.4. So pure 2.4 plus the additional changes from the OS 4. I just thought I'd mention that at least that you know, there, are, there are some improvements being also made to the uh, subsystem too. So, you know, uh, you know, Castle and, and Max and, uh, have been working a lot, and obviously there's a lot of forum discussion. There's been quite a lot of discussion on the Amiga, Amigas.net forum as well, with bin utils. So you know, work is work is progressing, and the idea at the minute is to bring at least uh, version 2.2, 3.2, 2.4, 2 but not add not add the extra work to get shared objects working with it, but just to bring them to basically say, hey, we've got 2.3.2, plus the changes that we made for Amiga specifically. So that's to bring it to 2.4.0, so that it could be a drop-in replacement for 2.3.2. And then subsequent versions after 2.4.0, uh, 
would be able to handle the issues with them and that we've had with shared objects. Because uh, again, on Amiga's time that you'll find that, um, that it's not working at the moment. But we do actually have some passing tests at the moment, so progress has definitely been made there. There's a link to more information about the specifics of uh, the issues with what we're actually having problems with, which is the constructors and the destructors and stuff like that with bin utils. A lot of that goes uh, over my head quite frankly because Max and Castle are doing quite a good job at it at the moment. Um, static linking is never really a problem. To be honest, in the Amiga OS 4 world, I really prefer static linking. I think shared objects just give us massive headaches that we could do without shared libraries by all names, but shared objects, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a particularly clean solution. Um, but yeah, and it happens actually that AD Tools in general has quite a lot of little patches, including the late and great Fred Fish. I mean, he's got patches and for the new tools go from the very late 90s. Um, and it sounds bad saying it, but you know, that's, uh, we, we, we don't need the 68K stuff in AD Tools anymore. When people are building cross compilers for 68K, they're not using Sebastian's um, AD Tools repository, they're using different repositories. So the idea is to try and pull out the 68k stuff and make it dead and just point it towards uh, Amiga OS 4. And, um, and I just added a note here to say that actually the issues, the very issues that I've been discussing, perhaps some more of the reasons why some root developers and well-known developers are still using really old versions of GCC. I mean, we're talking about version 2 and stuff like that because they know that those actually work. We'd obviously like to change that in the future so that everything's working with with the latest stuff. And uh, unreleased versions of libraries are causing a slowdown. So I was, you know, I sort of asked uh, George this question about the, the idea of opening the door for people who don't have access to the latest stuff because of this very issue. Like, for example, Max at the minute doesn't have access to. Um, uh, that's Mighty Max, by the way, I'm talking about Max. Uh, it doesn't have access to you know the latest stuff, so I, I just wonder whether or not we could do something with continuous integration where people who don't have access to the latest libraries can say, hey, I've got a test, is it working or not? Um, so they're causing a bit of a slowdown, but work is still progressing because, of course, some people in the team are beta testers, so some of them are beta testers. Some people are on the exec SG team, some people are on the other team, so we all help each other out in terms of collaboration and saying, just give me the source code, I'll tell you whether or not your test passes. And uh, I guess the big news is Sealant 4. So uh, Andrea, uh, AFX Group, um, has created an, a port from uh, what, what is Sealant 2. Uh, and actually, uh, Sealant 2 is still being worked on. Actually, there was some commits recently, I think, by LMF as well, actually, for Sealant 2. But we now have Sealant 4, and um, Andrea's worked on you know, a, a lot of uh, new POSIX support. Uh, which means that porting things is a lot easier. The, a lot of the stuff that we use, a lot of the software that we use, is coming from different architectures and different targets. We're doing a lot of porting, so it's really, it's really important to port. And of course, when that happens, we really need more positive support. A lot of times when you try and port something, build something, you have some sort of undefined reference or just something that isn't there because Sealant 2 or Neolib doesn't have it. We don't have really, uh, we don't have access to. I actually believe that we do have access to Sealant 2. I'm not too sure about that, um, but I know that we have a new. One. But Sealant 4 has been branched from Sealant 2, and because we're all together in this group as well, we're able to play, uh, apply changes to Sealant 4 very fast. So this, uh, for, so for Sealant 4, and firstly, why is it called Sealant 4 and not Sealant 3? Uh, well, we just said, okay, well, OX is OX 4. So that's just called Sealant 4. Um, you know, like it or not, it's, it's called Sealant 4. Um, it's now a shared library where, where of course, with Sealant 2 it isn't. So this uh, Andrea has worked on an actual Sealant 4 dot library in much the same manner you have a new lib dot library. Uh, we have crypto, Unix, Sopix, Resolve, uh, and, and Resolve libraries in there. And the repository is always available and people can make changes to it whatever. And a very good, as, I, as, as I alluded to earlier, the, it now happens that GCC has support for a new MCRT option, so where you would, let's say that you want to comply with Sealant 2, you would normally do dash MCRT. 
and CLT equals CLIP2. Uh, of course, you don't need to do it for ULIP because it's the default, but you can always do it if you want MCRT equals ULIP. Uh, well, now there's an option for MCRT CLIP4, so there's now three different choices of C, uh, C runtime libraries. Some people may like that, some people may not, but at the end of the day, it's an extra option. It's, uh, we're hoping to apply this for the, for, the, for the next SDK. Of course, that's, we have to discuss that with George uh, coming up, but at the minute, GCC 11 now has support for that. And uh, I'll be working on sort of backboarding it for GCC uh, 8 and 6, because as I said before, we still kind of need 6, for, at least for the SPE and for the A1222 and GCCA as well, uh, at least for the uh, exec SG, although I don't think C groups all that involved for the exec SG. Um, and we were, um, and also calling it C group was better as well if it was for depot because obviously people will upload libraries to that, and sometimes you'll find out there's new lib libraries and C lib 2 libraries. If we had continue to call it CLIP2, it would have got very confusing. So, another reason to call it CLIP4. And I think that's actually a very short one, uh, but I just wanted to give an update on the, the group and uh, AD tools. So, thanks very much. Thank Any you. questions, by all means? Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, do I have the map to speak? Can you hear Ellie? Yeah, I just turned my mic up. I just turned my uh, speaker up. Okay, All right, so I've got a quick question for you. I, I, with regards to SPE support, the advice has been given for folks who want to generate uh, SPE native binaries to use GCC 6. Now, I know that when you use the earlier versions of GCC 8, I don't know which minor revision of GCC 8 they actually pulled it. But they're just warnings. I mean, is there a particular reason why people shouldn't be using GCC8 to generate SPE uh, native binaries? I don't think so, no, I just don't know. I don't know if it's because people just don't bother or they find it hard or they just can't be bothered to, I don't know, I, I'm not too sure that, I don't, I don't see a reason why you would not be able to use uh, even GCC11 really. Um, of course, if you need SPE, you need GCC6, but uh, to, be, to, to answer that, I don't think that was any reason why you couldn't. Well, that's actually my question, because in GCC8, the earlier revisions of GCC8, the SPE support is still there, it's just, you get warnings. That's right. Uh, that, that, yeah, that's what I said before, was that it was deprecated, yeah, and I think there's a way to build it um, so that SPC, SPE support is in there. Okay. Um, the minor revision that's used, I'm not too sure what minor revision actually is in AD tools, because generally I'm using I'm using version 11. It might be that the minor version that we use in AD tools is past the point to when SP when the SPE code was taken out. All right, that's that's awesome. to... that makes sense actually. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then the other thing with regards to C Lib 4 is this what um, I've been seeing from AFX group on Discord, all these updates, so all that. Work that he's been doing is going to the C Lite 4 branch as opposed to another update for C Lite 2. And if the answer to that is yes, then when is that going to get up on GitHub or the name is going to change on GitHub? Yeah, so that is exactly that's, so yeah, that's exactly what you're saying from the AFX group. All that stuff um, is to do with C Lite 4. And um, he actually has now. There's an app repository, there's a private app repository that you can add if you want, so you can simply add it to your app sources and you're able to pull out the latest libraries. Um, the sealant falls completely open source, so it's accessible. Um, I can throw in a link if you need it or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it's all open source. And like I say, if you put it, if you now pull today AE Tools Master, so the latest version of AE Tools from from Sebastian's repository and build GCC 11. You don't have to do anything special other than add the flag MCRT equals C of 4, um, and it'll just run out of the box. Okay, I'm just trying to come up with the right recipe for, I, I have an interest in the A1222, I'm trying to come up with the right recipe here, and it seems to me that since CLIP 4 actually does have some optimizations, particularly in the memmove area and memcopy area, 
And I think you took it from the uh, libc variants that Freescale put together at some point in the past. I would probably want to use that as opposed to new live. I want to use the right version of GCC. I just need to investigate the six versus eight based on what minor revisions included. Okay. Yeah, um, and, I, and actually, I, I kind of forgot to mention that uh, Andrea did, but Andrea is using it. But I, I only just got enough information of him, like, not that, even a few hours ago, but he's using a particular um, uh, memory memory allocator. He's using a different memory allocator, for example, as well. But uh, I didn't get enough information of that quite uh, enough. But yeah, so there's some interesting stuff going on with Sigma really before. And uh, as I say, on the on the on the backlog of stuff to do is certainly to be able to make Celic four accessible to the versions before eleven. So that's including eight and six. I don't think we'll go any. It would be really nice if we could get a GCC eight with SP. We could say, hey, just forget about six, and because no one uses nine, no one uses ten, and I don't think there's any patches for those. So it's either eight and eleven room. Um, so yeah, that, that that would be nice. But as I said before, on the backlog is to enable it so that CLIP 4 will also work with uh, GCC 8 and 6. Uh, Ryan, if you allow me, I would like to add on this uh, topic. Um, we can hear me, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, as you can see, we are a small team of people who also try to understand how things are working. Uh, there is experience in our uh, team, but the topics are a lot out there. Uh, so we decided to focus on two, three topics that make sense for us, which are the WebKit, the R tools, the Silic 4, and the binary tools, and focus on them to be finished. Uh, Andrea, uh, Amade, uh, AFX Group had a look on um, backporting the SP commands to uh, GCC 11, so that we can say that we have GCC 11 that supports SP and can compile uh, um, applications for the SP machines. Unfortunately, this uh, work was quite complicated and didn't complete. And then at some point we said, okay, uh, let's park it for now. Let's finish with GCC 11 and all the stuff that we want to add there and make it work as it should and uh, focus on the other topics as well and then we can revisit it at some point. And because also right now the only machine that has this kind of CPU is uh, A1222, there is no pressure that People, developers are looking for that and I understand what LD uh, really, uh, wants uh, to have uh, more applications ported and optimized for SP. Uh, but the user base out there is quite small right now and I don't know if this is going to be, uh, how big it's going to be in, uh, in a year from now. From now. So, because we are a, a small team, we have to focus on specific topics. And uh, that's what uh, we decided so far. Of course, uh, Amiga Labs is open, and uh, anyone can uh, join us and uh, help us to, to achieve more goals, if possible. Thanks, George. Any other questions from the hotel? Looks like everyone here is happy. Oh. You have anything? No questions. No questions? Okay. So thank you. Uh, thank you. So that ends our, our, our morning yeah. session.